So you may have an idea of where we're heading with rational expressions, and that's going to be adding and subtracting when they don't have like or common denominators. Before we get into actually evaluating these expressions, it's going to be good to do some practice in finding common denominators. Let's start with some basic fractions, one-third and three-fourths. Looking at our denominators, we've got three and four. The common denominator is going to be the least common multiple, or what both of these numbers can go into. In this case, we know 3 and 4 can go into 12. 12 would be our common denominator. Let's turn the heat up a bit. 1 over 2x squared, 5y over 4x. Looking at our denominators, first let's take the numbers, 2 and 4. We know the common denominator for those, or the least common multiple, is going to be 4. So that's a start. Moving on to our variables, we've got x squared and x. Well, if I multiply this x by another x, that would give me x squared, so we can see that both of these terms can go into x squared. So that's going to be a part of our least common multiple, or our common denominator. And here we are, 4x squared. Here's an interesting one, a plus 2 over a minus 1, and 4 over 3a. Let's take a look at those denominators. First off, I see we've got an a minus 1 and a 3a. We've got this 3 over here. Now this side we do not have a number multiplier out front. We do have this 1, but this 1 is grouped with this a. So we really can't relate those to one another. So it looks like our common denominator in regards to just a constant multiplier is going to be 3. Next, take a look at this a. Kind of like with the 3, even though we have an a over here, it's grouped with this a minus 1. So this a and this a cannot account for one another. But nonetheless, we do need an a in our group, so I'm going to go ahead and write an a in with our least common multiple. Lastly, we have not taken care of this a minus 1 yet. So, since this a minus 1 is not a part of our least common multiple, we need to include that whole group. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a minus 1 right there in our group. And our least common multiple is going to include this whole thing. 3, taking care of this 3, a, taking care of the a, and the a minus 1, which takes care of this denominator on the first fraction. In this example, we've got 2 over 2b minus 5 and 3b plus 1 over b minus 1. Remember, whenever we have an addition or a subtraction sign, it automatically groups all the components of it together. So this 2b minus 5 is grouped, and this b minus 1 is also grouped. So, in trying to take care of these, let's start with the 2b minus 5. This 2b minus 5, since that's not the same as this uh, b minus 1 here, it's, it, it has to be exactly the same to account for this b minus 1, but it's not. So, we're just going to put the 2b minus 5 in our LCM. Next, we still have this b minus 1 that's not accounted for yet, so we have to include that in our least common multiple common denominator. And there we go. All right, last one. Here our denominators are x squared minus 5x plus 6 and x minus 3. Now before we proceed, this thing over here looks like we can factor it. And remember, factoring usually makes these things a lot easier. So if we factor x squared minus 5x plus 6, we're going to get x minus 3 times x minus 2. From there, let's see if we could find our least common multiple. Here's x minus 3. I've also got an x minus 3 over here. Since those are exactly the same, that x minus 3 that I'm going to write here can account for both of these. But I still need to take care of this x minus 2. So let's add that x minus 2 in. And we've got our common denominator right there. x minus 3 times x minus 2. 